Today we're going to talk about aircraft reservoirs. Some people call them tanks. And when we look at the schematics, we'll call them tanks, of course. So there's a couple things we want to talk about. There's two types of reservoirs. There's an inline reservoir, and of that, there's two categories, which is a pressurized uh, reservoir. Sometimes we have to pressurize, and some reservoirs are not pressurized. The integral reservoir, I'm not going to talk about, but an integral reservoir is something where you may have a hydraulic component, and it has its own little, its own little reservoir built in. But we're going to talk about the inline reservoirs today. Here's a picture of a couple of inline reservoirs, most common type. Now we can see here on the one on the right, we've got electrical wires coming out of it. So it's got some kind of sensing element in there, probably going to tell us how much fluid a liquidometer, right? And the other one has got, uh, uh, it just looks like a plain Jane reservoir. Reservoirs for, uh, do several functions. One function is that they store fluid. We got to have a place to keep extra fluid in here. And you can see here, there's a normal fluid line here. And so there's a filler cap where we're going to fill this up with uh, fluid. Now this one's designed so we can't really overfill it. We want a little bit of air gap in here. And then up top, we have a connection so we can pressurize this with air. On the right, how do we know how full it is? Well, there's a sight gauge. And the sight gauge is one way we can do it. Some uh, reservoirs have a dip tank, just like your engine, like your oil dipstick, right? And it has a a locking mechanism, an O-ring, right? So that it'll hold pressure, but we can pull that out and see how much fluid we have in there. See these fins? It says fin, 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 fin. What do you think that's for? Well, I'll tell you what it's for. It's for cooling. So you need to be able to cool the fluid. The fluid goes out and runs through the hydraulic system. It gets hot and it comes back to the reservoir where it can dissipate heat. It can cool down. The other thing that we have, if we have a bucket of anything, if you have a bucket of oil, or you get to sloshing around, right? So there are these baffles, and what the baffles do is they keep it from sloshing because we don't want foaming. We, we want our fluid to come back, rest. Hey, you guys rest. You worked hard in the hydraulic system. We want it to rest, and we want it to cool and remove heat. And down at the bottom... We have connections, and notice there's two connections. Uh, one connection is for the regular system uh, where our hydraulic pump is going to get its fluid, and then we have an emergency connection. Okay, so here's how this works. We have a standpipe, and the standpipe is normally what where the fluid. The fluid will go through the standpipe and then down to the... Um, It'll go through the standpipe and down to the hydraulic pump. And so here we are. We got standpipes. So these standpipes, the standpipe section here is going to pull fluid. Actually, fluid's going to come down between these two. This is kind of bowed out. I don't know why they did that. Fluid's going to come down here to the center, and that's the standard outlet. You notice here on the, the emergency outlets on the side. So let's say that you have hydraulic fluid leaking. You broke a line, and it's leaking out overboard over on the right wing. So... If you run out of hydraulic fluid, how are you going to put your landing gear down? People thought about this. So the standpipe, if, if we're leaking fluid, the, the fluid level's coming down, it's coming down, coming down. When it gets down to here and it gets below the standpipe, pipe, the hydraulic system says, hey, I'm out of fluid. So once the normal system goes out of fluid, the pilot can then switch to the emergency system if he needs to. And he has a a switch in the cockpit or a selector valve. At that point, now maybe what the, what he wants to do is maybe he says, well, we got cables running the flight controls, so we're going to wait until almost landing before we put the gear down and we'll switch it to emergency then. I, I don't know, maybe he declares an emergency. But this emergency connection here, now when the fluid goes below the top of the standpipe, the regular hydraulic system cannot access this fluid anymore. But the emergency system can, can do it, and it, the emergency system can access it to the very last drop because that's where that is. So those are the main things. Usually you have a strainer here, and sometimes you have filters in the, um, in the reservoir. Those are the main things. Here's a remote quantity indicator. So if you looked at this first, back when we were looking at this picture here, and we were looking at these, these guys, these wires coming out of here, Okay, this is out of either a Boeing or an Airbus or 
a uh, Gulf Stream, something halfway new, we can see a, a quantity indication system on there. We're going to look at a couple more things here. Let's look at this. This is a standard hydraulic system um, illustration, and what they're showing us here is there's a big reservoir up here, and we can take a sample out of it, and we have, uh, this is supply, and up top is pressurized air. So we have to, if we're going to fly, okay, so thing we got to know is that if we fly at low altitudes, like little airplanes, general aviation airplanes, we don't need to pressurize. But once we go up high, uh, you ever go up to, uh, go up in the mountains of Colorado? It's hard to breathe, right? Uh, in fact, if you're a mountain climber, a mountain climber needs oxygen to breathe because the air is too thin. It doesn't, and there's not enough pressure to breathe. So an airplane going up to 30,000 feet, we pressurize the reservoir. We have several different ways that we can do that. Our top connection here is the connection vent for the pressuring, pressurization. So we can use pressurized air. The methods of pressurizing are